Hello everybody at home, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Uh, today's edition we're going to be talking about addiction. That's right, dick sticks that are addicted to shit. Um, so basically I used to be a smoker, an avid smoker, I used to go through a pack a day when I was engaged. Uh, eventually, after the engagement I went to Rollies and I'd go through a pouch every third, fourth day. I'd buy another one. And that on top of marijuana and some other stuff, to be frank and honest. And uh, I tried quitting several times, only to return. And eventually I was able to succeed with smoking cigarettes. The weed took a little bit longer, because it's not called weed for no reason. It keeps popping up, even after you're pretty sure you've taken out the last route. So, how did I quit with the smoking? I mean, now it's been almost three years since I've had a cigarette. And since I've experienced any urge whatsoever, even when I'm drinking, because there's always that association that we, people make with smoking and socializing and doing other things, which whenever they do it, they feel like a cigarette, whether it be hardcore sex or alcohol that they're drinking. So how did I do it? I did it like this. Basically, at that point in time, they opened up a gym, Snap Fitness, 24-hour gym, across the road from me. So I figured, you know, I want to be a pro wrestler. That was my ambition and still is. So I started working out, working out hardcore and focusing on my health. I signed up with Snap Fitness and it cost me $25 a fortnight. And pretty much as soon, as soon as I signed up with Snap, I found, you know, that was it. I didn't buy any more packets of cigarettes again. And I quit for good. Now, I tried committing to quitting before, like I said over and over and I just kept coming back, kept failing, kept giving into my urges, something stressful would happen and I'd just cave. And then all of a sudden I sign up with this gym, I start getting healthy and automatically I just stopped, stopped smoking and I never went back. And I thought about this and I thought about why and what the biggest difference was and it occurred to me that every other time I tried to quit smoking it was me trying to quit to a negative which isn't doesn't really make sense, you can't really quit to a negative. You can't commit to not doing something. Whereas the time where I did actually quit, I had committed to something. Something, a goal that was, you know, full of substance. It was somewhere I was going, ideas in my mind, motivations, dreams. I actually committed to that, you know, to my health and becoming fit and buff for my wrestling. And as a result of that, as a consequence of me committing to that, I had to give up smoking. It didn't make sense to go to the gym and to get healthy and do all the, and pay $25 a fortnight just to furthermore waste my money on undoing all my hard work by buying cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? It made no sense whatsoever. So automatically a, a switch flicked in my mind and I found it much easier just to turn my back on it and leave it behind me. So I think that's the biggest difference of all regards quitting something. I think it's it's pretty pretty uh, ineffective trying to quit to a negative, trying to commit to not doing something. Whereas it makes more sense if you can find something that's really important to you, some kind of goal that you want to achieve or something you want to do for someone else um, that you can commit to. And as a result of that, you, you have to quit doing these certain things that you, that you want to quit. I think it would be much easier to stick to that instead of trying to just to commit to not drinking or not smoking or not having too much sex and not, not seeing the prostitute every night, you know what I'm saying? If you try to commit to not doing something, eventually you will cave in. Because when we get to the lowest point of lows and we feel we are lacking and we've already lost everything, then what's the point in committing to nothing? You know what I'm saying? You will, you will, you'll break that promise and that commitment just to, just to fulfill your void for that time because you've already got nothing. So there's no point to commit to nothing when you've already got nothing. You may as well just break that promise of quitting and get that fixed. Whereas if you commit to something that is strong and it's going to stand the test of time regardless of what comes your way, even when stress comes by, stressful situations, you know, you've still got something there to hold on to. Something like a pillar of strength and motivation supporting you. So even when the winds of change blow real hard, try and knock you on your ass, you can still hold on to that pillar of support and be like, well, I'm still not going to do all that other stuff because I'm holding on to this, because I'm holding on to this dream, this aspiration, this goal I'm trying to attain because I need to quit smoking so I can be healthy and do wrestling or 
because I need to quit drinking so I can be a good father and a good husband to my wife. You know what I mean? I think it makes a big difference. My father also quit smoking and now it's to the point he, he can't be in the same room with anyone that's smoking. Even if they're a few meters away, he'll cough his hole up. He hates smoking. And he used to smoke a lot, apparently, when he was younger. And he quit because of me when I was a child, very young, a baby. One day, he, you know, I ran to him or toddled to him and I, he picked me up. And he kissed me and I started choking and coughing in his face. And from that moment, apparently, he just made the decision to quit. And it wasn't that he committed to quitting, but it was that he committed to me. Because I was more important to him, my health, and his ability to be around me without infecting me with this toxic smoke, that was more important than the smoking, which wasn't really doing him any good anyway. So he committed to me, and as a result, he gave up the smoking, and he never went back either. And I think that's the difference. So if you're trying to quit anything in life, it's pointless in my opinion, trying to quit and commit to that equipment, uh, to that quitting and not doing something. Instead, try to find something that you can commit to. Commit to doing something important to you and quitting will just be a natural symptom of that, a natural side effect, a natural consequence of this greater commitment, something you can actually hold on to. And still, it might take you several times of quitting before you finally make that final break. And psychology says that on average it takes between five, seven to nine times, five to nine times of breaking apart from something we're addicted to and then returning to it before we finally make that clean break. And this includes relationships and people that we become addicted to. This applies also that each time you find yourself leaving someone, maybe a toxic partner, each time you find yourself leaving some kind of habit behind, at some point you will return, right? And let's say it's an abusive relationship, if we're talking about relationships, you might return for a bit, and at some point you'll leave again, and then again you will return. And people are like, why do they keep returning? On average it takes five, seven to nine times before you finally move away. And each time, each time you move away, and each time you return, the amount of time you spend within that relationship, or the amount of time you spend feeding that addiction, minimizes, it shortens, and decreases over time. And the, each time you leave the relationship or the habit, each time you kick it, uh, the amount of time it takes for you to return increases. So basically, if you imagine two circles overlapping each other, and they're pretty much, that represents, you know, one, one circle is you, one circle is the relationship or the drug or whatever it is you're addicted to. To start with, they're overlapping, and then when you first leave that circle, even if it's just for a couple of weeks, you end up returning and instead of the two circles completely over, overlapping, they're a little bit further apart. And you spend less time, and you're not as absorbed in it as you were the first time. When you leave, you spend more time away, and when you come back, there's even less of an overlap. And this keeps happening. You keep spending more time away from that which you're trying to break clear of, and you spend less time in it, and involved with it, until it vi finally, eventually, the two circles, you and whatever this thing is you're addicted to, are completely separate from each other. From which point you've made the clear break. For me, it took me about five times to try and quit smoking. And I can tell you, literally, I first time I succeeded for two weeks, then I succeeded for a month, then I succeeded for two months, and even I can see the pattern that I, I spend more and more time away each time, and more or less time inside doing the same old shit again. And I found that each time it became easier to the point where it just became not a problem at all anymore. So yeah, that's the food for thought today on addictions and addictive relationships. You've been watching Walking and Talking with Phoenix. And uh, yeah, remember it's quitting is not an action and quitting is not a step that you take. It's a process. And it starts with you committing to what really matters most to you. Something that takes priority. And naturally, the rest will just subside. Thanks.